Here's how I think the elevator pitch for this film went down. Say, you remember the movie Twister? Why don't we remake it using modern CGI? I don't know. We need to find a way to get more man-children to see it. Hmm. I've got it. We'll change the rival Storm Chasers to rednecks and have our main characters drive the Batmobile. It's on the right track, but we need something with a little more... heart. We don't want to come off like Michael Bay. Well, how about we work in a subplot about a teenager who wants to ask this girl out and the danger brings them together? We can even give the character daddy issues to make him more sympathetic. I don't know, I have the feeling we're getting a little bit clustered. Okay, okay. What if we did it as a found footage film? That's brilliant! expectations going in. I mean, if you've seen one disaster movie, you've pretty much seen them all. And to my surprise, it pretty much managed to meet my expectations exactly. And really, that also is not really that much of a surprise because the advertising didn't really give any clue about the story because it only really focused on the one thing that anybody who watches disaster movies wants to see. Lots and lots of destruction. I was mildly intrigued when I found this was a found footage disaster movie because that worked so well for Cloverfield, didn't it? However, it's here that we kind of run into the biggest problem of the film, and that's the fact that it doesn't commit to the found footage format, or even to the format of a docudrama. Part of it can be attributed to the fact that we're following too many points of view at once. I mean, in most found footage films, we're usually following either one person or one group's story, effectively following the point of view of one camera. I mean, best example, look at Blair Witch Project or Cloverfield. But here, we have a film that's trying to effectively tell us three stories at once. Two of those stories are actually pretty decent, they actually had potential, the third one being the most lacking. But the ultimate point is that it really needed to pick one of those plot lines and follow it. It needed to pick one of those stories and have that be the main story we're following instead of trying to stitch together these three major storylines. Another problem is that the writing of this film is also at odds with the found footage format as it tries to work in cliché on top of cliché on top of cliché. I mean, we have various cliched characters as the emotionally distant dad who actually cares for his sons, or the storm chaser who cares only about getting the shot, or the rednecks who want to become famous on the YouTubes, and so on. The main thing is that a lot of these shots and a lot of these scenes are blocked out the way you would a traditional film that isn't a found footage film. However, this goes against the fact that the film has established that everything we're seeing on screen is from the point of view of somebody's camera. This leads to quite a few moments in the film where you're constantly asking, who's shooting these scenes? I mean, you see all the characters on screen at one point, they're all hanging on for dear life, the tornado is wreaking havoc, who's the idiot not holding on for dear life in order to shoot these close-ups? And how come we're not seeing them getting sucked up by the tornado and killed? Like I mentioned before, it really needed to commit to the idea of the found footage format that it established from the very opening scene. Now for the one thing that disaster movie junkies care about. The destruction. Yes, there's a lot to be had. However, the CGI on the tornadoes and the cloud formations needed that extra bit of polish to really sell the illusion. Now, I don't know if it's because the CGI technology just isn't quite there yet, or if the crystal clear images of this found footage is working towards the illusion's disadvantage. I mean, when an image is crystal clear like this, it can be very easy to spot the fake parts of an image. So really, this is a case where a little bit of grain may have gone a long way to really sell these tornadoes because even when people are shooting on like their camera phones and camcorders we still see everything is like crystal clear and are able to hear things clearly. If they just decided to actually simulate these cameras a little bit more it could have worked. It really could have sold it a lot better. Overall the film pretty much is exactly what it is. A disaster movie. If you go in expecting nothing more you won't really be disappointed. However, you won't be particularly amazed either, as the film doesn't really boast anything worth writing home about. I mean, yeah, it looks somewhat convincing, but really all the destruction is just kind of boring to watch. I mean, like I said, seen one disaster movie, you've seen them all. Now, the one compliment I can give is that the ending was kind of nice. It actually managed to bookend the story quite nicely. However, it would have worked a lot better if the film had only been following one major plot line. So, long story short, it is what it is. But there have been better disaster movies made in the past, there will probably be much better disaster movies coming out in the future. This film does nothing more than just add another title to the list. And that's pretty much it. 
So all of that said, I give Into the Storm a 3 out of 5. So that's it for this episode of Ronnie's Reviews. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.